All right, nerds, Cubby here with one of my all-time favorite people in the entire world, Mark Buckingham of Fables. Mark, how you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks very much for uh, wanting to have a chat with me today. Oh yeah, no, I, I had to jump at the opportunity. <laughs> uh, how's your San Diego Comic-Con going so far? Uh, going very well. This is about my seventh or eighth, I think. I'm losing track at this <laughs> point. Uh, but no, I absolutely love this show. Always have a good time here. So many friends, so many exciting things to see and do. All jam-packed in four days and it's uh, just yeah, non-stop. Yeah. And this time I've got my wife with me for the first time so I'm having that that experience of taking a newbie round and, and <laughs> oh, showing her how chaotic this place can be but it, I love it honestly I really do have a great I, time here. I was last year I was first year and everyone was just like oh man just I just want to see your face so I, I totally get where that's coming <laughs> right. from uh, anyways want to get into fables I want to talk about it okay what's coming up right now because I'm I'll be honest I'm a little behind on it okay. uh, super team was the last story arc I had oh, really? okay, I've been right. keeping up on it just kind yeah. of what's going on and it's blowing my mind just hearing about what's going on. Sure. So can you tell us anything that's... Yeah, I mean, the, the, the focus for the last few volumes has been more on the Wolf family, especially on the Cubs, on the children. We've been uh, having some quite traumatic stuff happening with uh, Therese and, and Daria. And, uh, yeah, Cubs yeah, and Toilet, sorry. So um, now we had the Snow White arc, which was more of a focus on snow. Uh, but also included uh, some really traumatic things happening with uh, with Big B, which I don't want to say because if you're reading in the trade, you haven't got to that yet, so that's fine. Um, and then after that, we're now into a new arc called Camelot, and the focus here is more on Rose Red, once again, and this time it's to do with her relationship with Hope, and the fact that Hope has, um, has basically made her one of her new paladins of Hope. And so the, the, the question is, you know, in what aspect of hope is, is, is Rose going to represent? And, and she is inspired to try and create a new Camelot, a new round table, to, to, to find her order of knights that are going to help her achieve the quests and the good deeds that she wants to do. And so a lot of this is, is going to be focused on that and the people that are going to come and join her and some of the conflicts that will come out of that. But also we're going to look at the aftermath of all the things that have been happening with the Wolf family as well. And then there's another story arc that's running along through this as well to do with Geppetto and the Blue Fairy and all the things that are going on to try and stop Blue Fairy taking Geppetto away. So there's lots of really exciting stuff happening in this arc. So we're having great fun with it. That's one thing I always appreciated about the book, that it's characters that you know, that you're very familiar with. I was not familiar with Rose Red at all. Right. I, I, I didn't know anything, and then that's like the one character that stood out to me the most. And then Boy Blue, like them two together, just the whole thing. I, I really love what you guys do with your characters, and and mainly, I like that you guys switch. And, you know, Bill Willingham used to draw, and you actually wrote part of issue 100, which yep. was amazing, which was great. That whole Thank issue you. was awesome. Uh, is there anything else like that coming around? Are you guys going to maybe trade off some duties? Or? Well, I mean, there's always a possibility that we may do that again at some point. I mean, I, I am very actively involved um, in sort of helping Bill develop the story, reminding him of plot lines or characters. It's like, oh, we really must do something with this character again next, and, and things like that. He's very generous about, about allowing me to sort of be part of that process, too. So, I mean, it's also because simply at this point, I have 10 years, 11 years worth of fables all locked in inside yeah. this brain of mine. I th I'm no good for the real world, but when it comes to fables, I know everything. I think that's so. most of a Comic-Con. <laughs> so, um, so I find that I, I'm quite good at sort of, oh, by the way, you know, Blue Fairy's coming back, the, you know, in three months' time, so we need to build her back into the Get story, that things there. like that, you know. So, um, so that's all good fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, hopefully opportunities will, tur will turn up for us to sort of try other uh, ways of working. I mean, one of the things that's really nice right now is um, we've been working on the unwritten as well oh, as part yeah. of uh, uh, the, the Unwritten Fables story art that's running in Unwritten Diner. And what's been really nice with that is that it's been a really nice collaboration between myself and Bill and Peter and Mike where I went away with, with Mike for an evening and we kind of planned out some ideas for what we wanted to do with the story. We then threw that stuff at Peter and uh, Bill and they got together and they added their ideas into the mix as well. And so the whole thing has grown out of 
of us kind of throwing ideas at each other's teammates and, and you know, and, and building this thing together. And that's been huge fun. I mean, that's been so great. And so I've had a chance to work from scripts by Mike and Peter's working with Bill and then Peter and I are inking each other's work and things like that. So we're mixing things up a lot and creating a sort of a real sort of jam experience. So that's been huge fun, huge fun. Who's your favorite character to draw on a regular, you, you have to draw a million characters on a regular basis. Who's the one that you just get the biggest kick out of? Oh, um, Flycatcher, the Frog Prince, is my absolute favorite character in the series. Uh, I mean, I have a huge soft spot for Rose Red too, mostly because I base her likeness on my wife. So whenever awesome. whenever Rose turns up, it's like, okay, this right. makes me feel good. Um, and uh, to be honest, uh, the, all the animal cast tends to be the big thing. I mean, that was what really attracted me to the series in the first place is when, when Bill approached me and Shelley approached me about working with them on Fables, they offered me the choice. They said, do you want to do the uh, Legends in Exile story or do you want to do Animal Farm? And I said, I want to draw animals. I want to draw you know, uh, organic environments and, and some of the fantastical creatures like the giants and the dragon and stuff that were in that story. I said, this is the one I really need to do. So, so I kind of leapfrog over the, the first story oh, arc, went straight, straight into Animal Farm, and, um, and then I was hooked. After that, I really wanted to stay on the book. As a former comic book store employee that wanted everyone to read Fables, yeah. Animal Farm is the best because the first one, it's a little slower, you have to think a little more, and then that one, I just it's action-packed, great art, great everything, it just keeps it going. So well, thank you. I mean, I mean one, first easy. story arcs are always tricky. Yeah because you're, you're just basically trying to introduce all these characters to people. So many whereas, characters. whereas Animal Farm, it, you know, it, with, with Fables was very much like, okay, now here's a really good rollicking adventure yeah. with these characters that you're already getting to know. So that, that, is, that you know, the second arc is often the, the easier one for that reason. So. Awesome, awesome. Well, we have a couple questions that we ask everyone at Nerd Locker, okay. or everyone that we interview at Nerd Locker. Uh, first one, what's your favorite movie? Oh my goodness me. Um, I tell you what I will say, and people will laugh at me. Um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory with Gene Wilder from the 1970s. Um, it's the one movie that what I can watch and always cry <laughs> in the middle of. Um, uh, but uh, I guess otherwise, um, uh, you know, I'd probably end up picking on the first Alien movie or the first Star Wars movie. Um, you know, I mean, I, I am a, a, a certified geek, and, and you know, I mean, I, I'm very easy to, to you know, to. Pick Pick on what would probably be my favorite things, you know. So, uh, what about your favorite video game? I'm afraid I am useless when it comes to video games. You'd probably have to ask my better half, who plays lots of them. But uh, in my case, I, I have trouble doing something that's um, that's just a game. If you know what I mean, I, I like to uh, the, the things I spend time on. I like to um, to be creative. I think that's the problem, and, I, and so I don't tend to, to get involved in games. So I apologize for that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and lastly, what's your favorite comic book? Favorite comic book? Oh my goodness That's me. A huge this is always a hugely <laughs> difficult one. Um, well, I mean, I can tell you that my all time favorite comic artist is Jack Kirby. So that probably narrows it down a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, certainly those first hundred issues of Fantastic Four are still really important to me. Um, I was actually a huge fan of Commandy. I think if there, there had been an old book that I could have got my hands on, uh, that would have been one I would have loved to have done. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Mark. Uh, everyone, read Fables. The Best book out there, literally. I'm not kidding. Uh, it was great talking to you. And Lovely to you. Hope you have a so great much. Comic Con. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, I'm Mark Buckingham, and you're watching Nerd Locker, the place for your inner nerd.